Hello, so today's gonna be a bit of an interesting one. So it's gonna be Galio Hero Augment. So I don't get to show my first couple of rounds because the VOD got a little bit corrupted and I didn't download it. So this is the best that we have to deal with. Uh, basically, this is on stage three already. If you have, if you can't notice, this is the stage three carousel. So we have already passed um, stage two carousel and stage two. So this is basically right after Krugs. And I'm basically going to be playing Galio Hero Augment. For those of you that like my content, make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, but basically, I'm just going to go over roughly how to play Galio Hero Augment uh, as a little so for sort of a mini guide, as well as uh, give you a, a general idea of what to put and how to build the Galio. So, um, the Galio Hero Augment is called Deja Vu. Typically, the way that you're playing it is with uh, multiple vanguards. You play it very similar to Rumble uh, Hero Augment, and basically, you just want to play vertical... Uh, Vanguard. You want to basically play 6 Vanguard. Uh, Deja Vu makes it so that Galio becomes a backline unit. And then you're going for 3 star Galio as well as 3 star. Uh, usually you want both Mordekaiser and Rumble just to have like a really strong front line because Mordekaiser is pretty strong. And then you also want to play around mages. So your mid game you'll probably play something like 4 Vanguard, 3 mage. Uh, but typically what you want is you want Nora in. Uh, because you get the Yumi that you can add to the Galio, and then you typically want Nami, just because Nami's stun is so important to uh, allowing your, your comp to scale. And then typically on your Galio, I think there's many different renditions of items, we'll double check the items in a second, but typically what you want is you want double Gwinsu and a Gunblade, I think that's like the standard build, I'm not sure if it's uh, how good it is, we're going to double check it, but the idea is that uh, with the Gwinsus, uh, if you look at Deja Vu, which we'll look at in a second, I'll just show you the board here for a second so you can like commit it to memory or decide if that's the type of player that you are. Uh, but if we go on Explorer and you go something like Deja Vu, this is the hero augment that I was talking about. Uh, I think if I hover it somewhere, I should see it. Okay, Deja Vu, gain a Galio. Your strongest Galio has plus three range and gains 15 mana and six ability power on each attack. So the idea is that you really, really, really want to keep hitting uh, Galio. And then your Galio becomes a backline unit because he has 3 range. And because he's no longer stunning or reducing damage, uh, you're basically hoping that he uh, scales up his ability power by doing as many auto attacks as possible. So if I go Deja Vu and I go Galio 3 star, you'll see that it does really well in terms of the stats. It's like a basically like a guaranteed top 4 a lot of the time as long as you can hit all your units. And in terms of items, you'll see that the best item is always a Gwinsu and it's a Hextech Gunblade. I think it's double Gwinsu Gunblade is pretty good. Typically, as you can see, I put one Gwinsu on Galio. It says the next thing is another Gwinsu. So Gwinsu, Gwinsu, Gunblade is pretty good. Uh, I've seen other people in previous patches uh, build things that weren't Gwinsu. Sorry, let me just put like 16B, for example, and craftable. I've seen like some of the other AP items get put on Galio, but I think they're all significantly worse than Gwinsu, Gwinsu, Gunblade. That's because Gunblade gives so much sustain when you're auto-attacking that many times. So that's like the basic idea of how to play it and what the basic build is. Now we'll go back to the game. Sorry that's a little bit uh, different from some of the other videos that I produce. It's just because uh, this VOD got a little bit corrupted. I was looking for something to do. I'm actually recording two or three videos for the entire weekend. All in one night right now. Just because uh, I'm going to be out for the weekend. I'm going to have family over. So, uh, And then I have to like repot some plants. Because I bought some plants over the last couple of days. So um, I just want to... Put up all these videos uh, so I keep my daily streak so I'll mention some stuff on my actual board now because we'll actually get to see my board so like I said this is after the carousel on stage three so we missed a lot of the early rounds the video will be shorter as a result so you know I think that's nice for people sorry that you couldn't see uh, my spot early but basically the main thing you have to know is that uh, I usually don't take a 2 cost hero augment unless I have a copy of the 2 cost as well as one of the items that is really good on the 2 cost. So in this case, I had a Galio, so I got dropped a Galio, and I took Deja Vu, so I had 2 Galios, and then I also had a Gwinsu that I could have slammed really early. As you can see here, uh, my items didn't really work out that well. Uh, I think the I could have like at one point I think I made spark really early I didn't greed for gunblade and that's a big mistake this was a while ago this VOD by the way I just wanted to make it because I had it on backlog so this was a very old VOD uh, I took the gambler's blade because I was thinking maybe I can just generate a bunch of gold because I'm gonna be auto attacking a bunch and that's like my general idea but I'm not in the best spot uh, I think the gunblade really really helps with the sustain and as you can see it's usually really really good on the galio I didn't greed my components because I felt like I, I was win streaking early in the game so I was just trying to uh, maximize the amount of econ that I was getting from my win streaks so I, I basically just tempo slammed 
Uh, I made Spark really early because I think thought I was really strong. And I'm just playing this four hand guard with the Mordekaisers, and I'm trying my best to uh, to slow roll on level six in order to hit my Galio three as early as I can. Uh, but like I said, because I don't have Gunblade, I basically have like triple attack speed on this Galio. Uh, my Galio doesn't have that much sustain, so he could get easily sniped or uh, beat by some of these. Uh, you just have a little bit more backline access. So for example, here where I'm playing against Warriors, uh, my Galio might not have the same level of sustain that he would otherwise. But I'm just trying to go for full attack speed if I can. Uh, sorry, just one second. There we go. The black screen is always because I have to reset the inking that I sometimes forget. So as you can see here, um, this is what I mean by like a little bit of backline access. This guy level 6 has a Fiora too, by the way. Uh, it, it's one of those lobbies where it like things are very high roll. Uh, typically, when you have a like Galio hero, you expect to win a lot of the time. This guy had Portable Forge with Blitzcrank. We have a Blitzcrank hero here. We have um, this guy. This guy is not particularly strong, but the other guy has a Fiora too. So I just kind of got finessed, right? Fiora 2 on level 6, rolling for other units. Uh, extremely strong. So we're going to hope here. The, the, the video is a little bit messed up because obviously this is going to be stage 4. Typically, when you're going for a reroll around stage 4 1 slash 4 2, you're really hoping to try and hit your 3 stars just to keep up tempo with the lobby. Uh, as you can see, my items are a little bit awkward to deal with. Um, I do have, It's a very high component Galaxy. I don't know if it's like Loot Sub or something like that, but everybody's board seems like a little bit strong. I think this was a little bit uh, a, board, uh, a game that got a little bit out of hand for me at least. So I'm looking at what to make. I definitely want to make a shiv. I'm not sure if I put the shiv on the Galio or if I should put the shiv on like a Nami eventually. But basically, I'm just making Shojin because I didn't get my uh, I didn't get to make Gunblade. I don't know how my items worked out like this. I think I started by making Spark and then Krugs dropped me Sword Belt, so I just made Sterex or something. I'm not sure why I made Sterex because uh, I definitely have the components to make uh, good items here, but I just didn't. Like, I could have easily, like, you know, I have Gunblade components across all my components. So I could have easily made Gunblade at one point. So I'm not sure exactly how it worked out. Maybe I got dropped the Sterex uh, from some, but from something. If it's like a loot sub game, I'm not sure exactly what the Galaxy is. Anyways, uh, I digress. The idea here is that I'm basically just doing what I said before. I'm just rolling for Mordekaiser 3. I'm rolling for um, the other guy. It's not anger issues because that, that augment's pretty bad in general. A uh, call to chaos could be pretty strong, so I, I'd, I'd probably just take call to chaos here. Um, if I want, I really would have liked something like giant and mighty. I, I don't think there was a really good combat augment. I don't think lucky gloves is particularly great. Uh, I got 40 rerolls, which is actually really good because it means I can hit this Galio pretty pretty easily. Uh, but it, at the same time, I already had a lot of gold, so I might not cap as high because my prismatic is basically just a bunch of rolls. Uh, here, I just level for vanguard. Uh, I just level for 6 Vanguard because I I'm, I'm expecting to find this w last Galio at one point. There we go. So we hit it. Uh, I, I should have maybe rolled before leveling. I just wanted to level because um, a lot of times with the timer, that's just like, like a me thing. If I'm one off of a unit, it's like the odds aren't that much worse on level 7. So I decided to myself, okay, I can probably just level here, get in my 6 Vanguard, which is probably a little bit stronger. Mage makes the Galio double cast, so it does give him a huge buff in damage, but the tankiness that you get from 6 Vanguard, uh, I think is a little bit stronger, so on level 7, I'd rather just play 6 Vanguard. And then you want to make it to level 8 so that you can, uh, so that you can hit the, uh, what's it called? Also, I'm not killing this thing. That's so sad. I lost to Ash 2, because the Ash 2 just ramped up infinite. That's so sad. And what I was going to say is that, I'm pretty sure with six uh, six Vanguard is usually a little bit better than the Mage. Uh, in this case, I'd probably should probably play Mage just because my damage is a little bit low. Uh, like I should definitely just put Nami in over somebody else. But I think because I have so many rerolls, I think I'm just deciding like what I'm gonna sell. I just want to sack one turn and go straight to level eight, and then use all my rolls on level eight. Uh, last turn I was using my rolls because I wasn't sure if they disappear. Oh, I just do it this turn. Yeah, that's fine. It's just such a huge spike, and this is just my complete board, and now I just like use all these rolls on level 8 when I have when I have a little bit more money. Uh, like I said, my Galio is a little bit low cap because the items aren't particularly great. I have Gambler's Blade, so I should be really rich, and I should establish my Econ a little bit better. It was just unfortunate, so I have a really strong Hero Augment. I took a Gold Augment to try and, because I figured like, you know, I have a remover. If I hit like Gunblade on Galio, I can totally switch out the Gambler's Blade and play around the, uh, play around another item on the Galio for late game. 
So I'm not too worried about having Gambler's Blade with the double Gwinsu. Um, because attack speed's attack speed. He's going to gain a bunch of AP anyways from his, uh, his uh, uh, Deja Vu basically casting a bunch of times. The, uh, the main thing that I was thinking about this game around this point, obviously this game is really old, so it's a little bit difficult. Uh, but if you look at my augments, because, uh, like, yes, it was nice that I got a bunch of free rerolls for, from Call to Chaos. But it was kind of a little bit of a low roll because I already have a lot of money. I already took an Econ augment and I really would have liked something that would have helped either with like board stability or combat. So I was almost guaranteed to hit the Galio 3 anyways. Of course now I was able to hit the Galio 3 and level to 8. But I'm very low cap right now. There's not much I can do to improve my board besides leveling for a Xerath eventually. But I probably want to hit at least Tom Kench 3. Or sorry, at least Mordekaiser 3. Because that would definitely help me out a lot. Uh, in terms of like just stabilizing my board. So it, it, compared to other people that might have a prismatic that either spikes their board with a like, good combat or gives them like um, a decent amount of extra power. It, I like you know it's a little bit awkward for me to deal with if that makes sense. A little awkward for me to navigate um, my board strength relative to other people's board strength. So like, you know, I, I don't expect to go first this game, but it's probably going to be a top four anyways because it's Galio Hero Augment I've already hit. So a lot of these other reroll comps are going to have to suffer the fate of dealing with this Galio. Over here, as long as I can ramp up, that's why the front line is super important. The six Vanguard is really important. Uh, you need Galio to have time to ramp up. If, if Galio doesn't hit like, you know, at least 40 on the uh, 40 on the Gwinsus, the double Gwinsu. Like, you're probably not winning the round. You need to get to a point where the Galio is just doing so much damage from all the bonus AP from the auto attacks that you're basically just winning out for free. Here I'm debating if I make this Warwick or not. I probably just want to sell and make uh, and make 50 here, or sorry, make 20. But I think I want to hold on to this Rumble, so I, I might as well just chill for a second. As you can see, we have a wide variety of boards, a lot of RE boards. This this guy is very fucking strong and also got Radiant items, so he has Radiant IE on Nyla. Even though I'm 6 Vanguard, my Vanguards are pretty weak. Tom Kench is 1 starred. All of these have no items. I have some items on Vex, which is okay. But my Mordekaiser not being a 3 star makes it that a lot of these fights are really scary. I think I still win a lot of the rounds this stage. Uh, maybe I lose this one. See, I'm having such a hard time chewing through everybody. Right, my, my, like I said before, if Galo doesn't make it to around 40, you probably lost the fight. That's just like a rough rule of thumb, because I played this a couple times. As you can see, that's like the timer where now, you, you, we didn't win the fight. Right, Nyla 2, uh, Callista 1, able to beat me out, just a little bit difficult. Uh, this uh, Galio Hero, it, it, I, I don't like it that much. I find that it's very hard to get your items to work out. I feel like, even with Rumble... Uh, like you need like two good items is good and you're probably fine like there's a lot of times I take rumble hero and I have Jewel gauntlet bloodthirster and then I just put any third item and it's fine the same with Elise a lot of times I'll have bloodthirster and warmogs and the third item will be whatever uh, the thing with the Galio hero I feel like if you don't have all three good items it really 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 lacks the damage like I feel like if you don't have gunblade you lose so much sustain and if you don't have double Gwinsu, you lose so much damage that you, you can fail really easily. So I wouldn't take it in spots where you don't already have, like, a good idea that you're going to have, like, triple good items on this guy. Because if you do not have good items on this guy, you just you just lose. It is so miserable. So, like, a lot of these fights, it's like, I feel like I would win. But you get so much more sustain from the gunplay because it helps out your front line by so much because he's auto-attacking so much. And losing out on those that extra survivability makes it so the Gwinsus don't stack as much, and then it's just like a snowball that just lose very, very easily. Uh, here I'm just itemizing Nami. I still have these 20 rerolls. I don't know when to use them or what to use them for. Like I said, I had a bunch of gold anyway, so this call to chaos. Basically, my prismatic is right here. I have half the rerolls. It gave me 40 rerolls. I use 20 of them, and I have 20 rerolls I don't know what to do with. I, I should probably roll for Nami too. But I'm high stage HP in the lobby, so I'm trying to greed a little bit because maybe I can establish my Econ in such a way that I can go 9 and fit in Arcana, fit in Eldritch, fit in something as a plus 1 that kind of helps boost my board strength a little bit. Um, do I lose this fight as well? I don't think I lose this fight because I, I killed all his damage dealers. But yeah, this is what I mean, right? You, uh, at one point, Galio will just kill everything because he'll just ramp up, but you need to have such a stable front line. 
Um, three off Mordekaiser 3. Mordekaiser 3 is probably important. I can even go for Vex 3 in this setup. Just being level 8 with a Vex 3 is probably fine. Nora would also be huge to find for uh, some extra damage on the Galio. But this Warrior player is just so strong. I think it's because of Scoreboard Scrapper, by the way. I think he Scoreboard Scrappered the whole game and then he hit a Fiora too. So now he's just like super stable. Because a lot of times Scoreboard Scrapper, the biggest problem is that... Um, like the person you're gonna you're gonna have the damage you're gonna be really strong But a lot of times you just don't have the tankiness to survive because you need to hit like some upgrades or three-star units Whatever you're going for and if you don't hit your upgrades or three-star units a lot of times You just die to somebody that's a really high roller because that guy was already secured a Fiora 2 really really early He basically is just getting like infinite AP and uh, infinite AP and infinite AD while while still scrapping uh, This is an example of a fight where this just didn't go well uh, this guy has Ascension, so uh, in a fight where I have to outstall this guy, uh, School Mascot Syndra 3, it's still strong, even though Syndra got nerfed a bunch. This was when Syndra was giga nerfed, right? She also got buffed most recently. Uh, there's certain situations where Syndra does really well. That guy hit really hard on his support column, right? Having um, having uh, uh, the, uh, what's it called? The gem, the, the, the yellow gem there. I'm, I'm playing a stall comp, right? I'm trying to stall out as long as possible. With Galio, the main thing you should always think about is that you're trying to stall the round as long as possible, ramp up the Galio AP to the point where his auto attacks are basically one-shotting units. Uh, so you're trying to stall out. That's why you're playing six Vanguard. That's why six Vanguard is usually the best thing to play with the Galio. Uh, you just want to make your board so impossibly difficult to deal with that your Galio is going to ramp up enough such that he can kill the whole board, right? You're like a one-unit show with this hero augment. Uh, it's very difficult to play around sometimes because obviously like as you can see here I should probably roll deeper. I'm still trying to greed as much as I can I'm not sure if I can make it to nine and fit in some crazy board on level nine Like if I fit in arcana and I get a bunch of true damage buff like that would be really big for me as well So I'm trying to decide between the two of them here uh, as you can see I'm just bleeding out a little bit. I'm still 40 HP the lobby's pretty close a lot of people that are close in HP right I'm tied with another guy for 40 HP but I do expect to send it very soon. Probably next turn or in a turn or two. I'll just send it to zero. Uh, or I'll use at least my free rerolls to try and hit this Mordekaiser 3. There's also a Rabadons here. I'm kind of down for Rabadons. Because I think the, the, the Gunblade doesn't do that much. Or sorry, the um the uh, Gambler's Blade doesn't do that much for my Galio. So I can easily just remove her the Gunblade and just put Rabadons on the Galio. And just have a little bit of extra damage. Uh, because Rabadons gives damage amp as well. It's not just the AP. I don't think Rabadons is a particularly good item on the Galio. But I think that I can arrange my items a little bit better here. Just to have a little bit more value. So here I decide to switch out. I put Rabadons on the Galio. And then I put these on the Nami. And then I can put Adaptive Helm on the Vex. Because it can, it can work as a frontline item. I don't know if that's the best case scenario of what I can do. But I just want the damage amp on the Galio. Because I want a little bit of extra damage. Uh, I think that... In a lot of those fights, my Galio is ramping up, but he's just not killing, right? And because I don't have Gunblade that sustains my front line to allow him to get to that kill point, I'd rather just sacrifice a little bit of attack speed or a little bit of starting AS that Gambler Blade gives. I'd rather just like have the damage amp so that each of my autos is doing a little bit more. Or at least my ability. Like everything just does a little bit more with the... Of Rabadons. So as you can see this fight, this fight felt to me like a Rabadons diff. That's why I did that. Uh, like I said, Galio feels very underwhelming uh, if you don't have everything going for you. Like that's why triple triple good item on Galio feels very high roll. I wouldn't like I said before, I wouldn't suggest taking the Galio Hero Augment unless you have like like you know, unless you have like a Gwinsu start. Like unless you have Bow Rod Rod as your start. I wouldn't really suggest playing around Galio Hero. It's, it's one of the more finicky ones. The best way you can understand different hero augments um, and their relative strength, right? Or how, like, your first or eighth potential. The way you should always look at it is the hero augments uh, that are not a typical reroll already are probably going to be ass unless you have the best spot for it or the best items for it. So no matter what the stats say on how good it is, a lot of times hero augments do really well in the stats because people will take them when they have a good spot for it. Additionally... Um, the hero augments just being really strong in general is because they give a lot of direction. So depending on who you're looking at, uh, it helps a lot to just like, off the start of the game, know, I'm playing this comp, this comp is what I'm playing, these are the units I'm buying, etc. And everything is good. So it makes it very, very, uh, 
it makes it very easy. That's why I started the patch and started the set. A lot of times hero augments are really, really broken. But what I would suggest is like think about a comp like Spider Queen Elise nowadays, as well as uh, Lilia hero augment, so the high horsepower, and Witchy Wallop, the poppy hero augment. All of those work a lot better than Galio hero. The items don't feel as like overwhelmingly bad if you don't have good items on the unit. Because Elise, you can reroll with shapeshifters now, and it's it's a really strong board even outside of Spider Queen. And the Ari board is still really strong, so if you have like a free Poppy 3 and a Lilia 3 on your board that does like a shit ton of extra damage because of your augment, it actually works out really really nicely to also have um, to also have the hero augment because those are rerolls that are going to work outside the hero augment anyways. Okay, so here I just go level 9. Uh, this is what I was reading for. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm playing for. I'm either playing for Portal or Eldritch. And now I'm just going to use my free rerolls. Uh, I figured that I'll probably have enough. Ooh, do I just put in Briar? Yeah, fuck it. Briar's good enough. Uh, I should roll a little bit deeper. Uh, just to try and find the uh, the last Mordekaiser. Because I have so many rerolls. I don't want to spend them on 8. I might as well just spend them all on 9. Get some upgraded 5 costs. Right? If I can, get, if I can hit Nora 2 here, I think is that's what I wanted to play around. If I can hit Nora 2, uh, I'd be pretty happy with... Um, with my overall damage because she actually does quite a bit if she's upgraded as well. This guy's a Xerath, so that's kind of stressful, but we still beat him, which is great. It just comes down to like one or two, like the scoreboard scrapper guy I think always beats me because it's just a bad matchup and he's very strong. And I think some of the other players are also kind of capping out their board really high. Yeah, this school mascot guy is fucking strong as shit, by the way. Even though Syndra got nerfed, it's 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 like, eh, it's just really strong. Actually, is that is that even the nerfed one? I can't recall. I shouldn't make Rise here. I don't think Rise helps me here. I I think I, I should play for a legendary. Yeah yeah. Put put Bri uh, I think Briar two is way better than Rise two here. Like you just want an upgraded legendary that can sh just get, just do does stuff to stall, right? Because Briar is another stun, so that's really good. Also, my positioning here is really bad. I want I should isolate this Galio because I want to put other units here so the Fiora dashes the opposite way, right? Fiora dashing towards my Galio, kind of chewing him down a little bit, is pretty bad. Yeah, but I didn't expect to beat this guy. It's probably a guaranteed top four for sure. But it, the lobby is very close in strength, and that's not usually where you strive with these type of comps. I should definitely... Oh, God. I, there was a Nora. I skipped a Nora. Did you see I skipped a Nora? That's really bad. Come on. Just put in the Briar. The Briar is so much more important. Nora, yes. Put in the Briar, please. Artifact Anvil is fine. Oh, I should have grabbed Artifact Anvil as well. Bro, just put in the Briar. Please. What am I rolling for? Uh, I, I settled on one of the worst charms ever. Oh, that's a big mistake. Okay, I definitely think Briar here over this guy. Because the Briar stuns. So there's a chance that I just cap out. But this is a really hard matchup for me. Right? The reason this is a hard matchup is because this Eldritch Breach with School Mascot is hard to kill. And specifically in this case, having the gem makes it so that the whole team gets a huge amount of damage amp. Right? This wouldn't be a problem if Syndra didn't have this, this gem. Because look, as soon as the Syndra hits the gem, everybody just does so much extra damage. So I just go fourth here. I think Briar, this was a Briar diff, by the way. I think if I put, put Briar in here, I would have won this fight. Because it was so close. And I think if Briar got one stun off and the Syndra misses one cast, I'd definitely go like top four. Maybe it was just a fourth, uh, which is totally fine. I think at the time of the stream, I was tilted. But looking at it in hindsight, I definitely made a lot of mistakes. Let's just get the final... Uh, game screen for you guys. Oh, I didn't show it. Okay, so I'll just rewind a little bit. Uh, but anyways, the main idea is when you're playing Galio Hero, I'll try and show you at one point when I have my final board. A lot of times you're just going for this board in general. You want to usually want to hit Mordekaiser 3 and Rumble 3. I wouldn't ne necessarily push levels beyond level 8 because there's not much more you can play besides level 8 uh, without playing these couple of units here. Um, as you can see here, on level 8, you can either play for 3 Eldritch or 3 Portal. Portal is usually a little bit better because Portal also gives your Portal champions a shield. So it gives Galio a little bit of a starting shield, which is really nice. And then obviously, you want to prioritize Gunblade, Gunblade, and... Or sorry, you want to prioritize Gwinsu, Gwinsu, and Gunblade. Because uh, the Gunblade helps sustain your board. 
Uh, playing 6 Vanguard is always a must. You should never try and drop out a 6 Vanguard because all the other renditions don't really synergize well with the hero augment. If you're going for Galio as your main carry and you have Galio items and you're prioritizing Galio to be your most da your biggest damage dealer, you really, really, really want to have as many of these upgraded, right? Tom Kench 2 is really important. I kind of had a really shitty level 9 roll down. Uh, that was pretty bad. And my Prismatic also was pretty bad. I would have loved a combat instead. But you want a 3 star, 3 star, upgrade Tom Kench. Have all of these guys really, really juiced. Get the Nora in. Have Yumi on the Galio to increase your damage here. And then you're trying to stall out because eventually Galio will have so much AP that his attacks are going to absolutely melt everybody to a point where it's like not even close. So that's why the 6 Vanguard is really, really important as well as having 3 stars because if you can stall out long enough, the Galio also is pretty impervious to people like sniping him in the back line. Right, because he's Vanguard, he will still get the Vanguard shielding at 50% HP. So if an Akali tries to one-shot him or try and kill him, uh, he will just shrug it off and be fine. That's why Gunblade's also really important and the Yumi's really important. Because if something bad goes awry, uh, the Galio will be able to recover. But in general, like I said, this is one of the ones that's really finicky. Uh, this game, I obviously misplayed it into a fourth. I could have easily played better and gone like a third or even a second. Uh, there was many rounds that I could have played a little bit better. I kind of greeted. I rolled some okay prismatics to try and get like a better combat. when I And then I just had to settle with Call for Chaos. Uh, and like I said, my items aren't perfect on the Galio. I definitely messed up somewhere along the line. Because I don't know why I have both Spark and Sterex. Uh, I think I might have slammed Spark really early. Because I had double Gwinsu or something like that. Um, so, you know, mistakes aside, obviously, that's roughly how you play it if you've never played it before. And hopefully it was, hopefully you have an enjoyable time when you try it out in your game. Um, future videos, I'm going to make a positioning guide. I'm going to do some other, uh, relatively like interesting guides, hopefully that can help you in your rank up journeys. I myself am very close to getting to masters. So I just want to quickly get to masters and then next week. Uh, when I have a spare moment, because it was patched last week and now we have a better idea of all the different comps, I'll do a general reroll guide, which will also cover all of the hero augments uh, in a very basic way so that you have a one-stop guide similar to how I did last set. So that's actually going to come next week. I think I promised it like three weeks ago and I said, a bunch of I just gave up and I said I'm just going to wait till the next patch because I figured a lot of the rerolls would get patched. So that's why we're doing that. Anyways, thank you for watching. Hope you have a great day and... See you around. Bye-bye.